Welcome to our demonstration website. This is the second installment of a series of guides to Contact Form 7, a popular WordPress plugin for creating web forms. The plugin is lightweight and flexible. It is very good for those looking for a blank canvas to customize their own email notifications. You don't need to be a programmer, I'm not. Likewise, you don't need heavy plugins with all their bugs. All you need to do is copy and paste code snippets and make simple edits to customize it for your email. The results can be breathtaking. This second installment, the guide and video, will deal only with the email notifications generated by form submission. The plugin offers two panels for building email notifications. Usually, one goes to an employee or employees of the company operating the site. The other is often used as an autoresponder to the person filling out the form. Now, let's look at the guide. Hang on to it so you have the code and its corresponding explanations when you go to build your own email notifications in Contact Form 7. The thing to remember here is that you must create a self-contained HTML page within the email. It is possible that you can put a link reference to an external style sheet in the header, but you don't need all that much styling, so I put it all in the header. Let's look at the setup of the default form in Contact Form 7. Go to the WordPress dashboard, open the Contact Form 7 and select Contact Form 1 for editing. It is a very simple form. Look at the default mail layout that sends an email. It has a two field at the top. The default is the site admin email address, but you can put any email address to which you want to send the form information upon submission. You can also enter multiple addresses by separating them with a comma. Next is the from field. The default values are site title and an email address. Remember that this address must be for your domain. If it is not, contact Form 7 will give you a configuration error. You definitely don't want that. Next, under subject, are the short codes for site title and your subject. I don't know why they would repeat the site title. The next field is additional headers. This has the your email field short code. This is the email the user gives when filling out the form. Then there is the message body area. This is where we will do our work. Right now it is a simple layout that houses the small number of fields used. Below that are two check boxes. Neither of these are checked in the default. I would strongly suggest you not check exclude lines with blank mail tags from output. It will put a hole in your table if someone doesn't fill out all fields. However, be sure use HTML content type is checked or none of this will work. Below that is space for file attachments. We won't use that in this installment. Okay, let's look at the form in action. Not very impressive. We'll fill it out and see what happens. There. Now let's check our email. Certainly, nothing fancy. Just a plain text message. Now, let's look at a more complex form. Here is the form we created in the first video, where we taught you how to build multi-column layouts and style forms. I have already created a custom email so let's see it in action. Allow me to fill out the form and submit it. There, now let's check our email and see the results. Quite a difference is it not? The message is a table with multiple columns and rows. It has orange headings with descriptive text and the Simbok icon at the top. This looks much better. You can do this. 
Just take it slow and read the code carefully. You will figure it out. Change it the way you want to get the look you want. Experiment, you are not going to break anything. I'll show you how to do it from scratch in the video. We'll create a new mailer form and take you through it step by step. Let's go. Let's edit some code. Look at the print guide. The first element is create a complete HTML page within the CF7 mail workspace. This HTML is the basic code needed to set up the mailer page. The first line declares the document type. The next declares that HTML will follow. The meta charset tells your server what kind of character set you are using. This HTML5 specification encourages web developers to use the UTF-8 character set, which covers almost all of the characters and symbols in the world. The title is self-explanatory. Within the style tags, we'll go the CSS for the email. A closing tag for the head follows. Next is the body tag, after which all our content will follow. Finally, we close the open tags. All your work will be within these tags. Your CSS will go between the style tags. Your HTML and field shortcodes will be built out between the body tags. Next, in the guide, is CSS used in our demo. Here's CSS that allows you to center an image in the email notification. Also, there is code to set a border around the table we are using in the demo to display the data. Likewise, it sets a border, padding and font size. Change any of the values to obtain the look you want. You may add additional CSS you want within the style tag. Add an image to your email. This HTML inserts an image in your email. Note that it references the CSS class declared above to align the image. I used it for the Simbok icon as a header image. All you have to do is insert your image URL where shown. To get a URL you will need to upload an image to your media library. Now look at create a table with a header band. This HTML creates a table with an orange header band. The table is 100% wide, that is, it fills the screen and has a cell padding of 2 pixels. You will see how this padding gives a nice effect. This band will span 3 columns, the number of columns in our current table. When doing a table with only 2 columns, you would set the column span at 2 columns. Next in the guide, we have create a 3 column row. This HTML sets up a 3 column table you created above. The width for the 3 columns has to add up to no more than 100%. Each line has a field name followed by a line break in the actual field. One note, do not use a for slash in the tag. It won't work important. If you want to change the number of columns, you must create a new table and add the appropriate markup. Now, we have created a two-column row. This HTML sets up a two-column table. The width for the two columns has to add up to no more than 100%. Each line has a field name followed by a line break in the actual field. Well, that's all the code we will be using. We will copy, paste and edit these few code snippets to build the custom email notification we showed you in the beginning. You can do this. Let's do it now. Return to the WordPress dashboard and open up Contact Form 7. We will select the form name styled and duplicate it. Name it Email Demo and save it. Ignore the form content. We're not going to touch that. It's the mail tab we want. Go down to the message body and delete everything. Like I said, we are going to do this from scratch by cutting and pasting code from our guide. Go back to the guide and copy the code for a basic HTML page.
Paste it in the top of the message body. Everything will go within this basic structure. Next, copy the CSS, including the style tags, and insert it into our message, where the style tags are. There. Now, I am going to scroll down. To the actual mailer, markup in the guide. From here on, I will copy and paste completed elements of the mailer, so you don't have to watch me type. I can be all thumbs and painfully slow. Anyway, the rest of this content goes between the body tags. First, from the guide, we will copy the image code. It already has the URL for our heading image. Paste it into the message body between the body tags. Second, we will do the orange header band that you will remember from the demonstration. Copy this from the guide markup and paste it below the image line. Back to the guide. Select the two rows of three columns. Copy and paste it on the next line in your message body. That's the rest of the table for the 30% lines. Now we'll go back to the guide and select the 50% table, header and all. Back to the form mailer markup and paste it on the next line. The form layout now requires we add another set of three column, 30% rows. We copy it from the guide and paste it on the next line. Finally, one more two column row and we are ready to test it. Save. Copy the form short code. Go to a page created for this. Email demo. Open the page. Insert the short code into the page. Save it in view. There's our form. Let's see if our mailer works. Allow me to fill out the form and submit it. Now, let's check our email. There it is. It worked. If you think of changing something we didn't discuss, you can do that too. I find all my guidance at the W3 Schools website. You can too. Like I said, you can do this. I hope this has helped. Your questions or comments will be greatly appreciated.
please subscribe. I can't tell you how much it means that you subscribe. If I am to be eligible for YouTube monetization, I need to have 1000 subscribers. I'm way short of that. We need your support to continue. Please subscribe now and see all the great tutorials we have now and in the future. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Best wishes always and good day.